you're given a fourth degree polynomial and it has roots at negative 5 or of negative 5, negative 2, 1, and 3 and has y-intercept 0 comma 15. Okay, now given that information I'm gonna ask you to ignore this part right now and let's focus on these guys. So that's a root and our polyno polynomial is degree 4. So I know p of x is equal to some x to the fourth Okay, plus other stuff, dot, 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 dot. And specifically, I know that my polynomial can be factored to be x minus some value, x minus some other value, x minus some other value, and x minus some other value. And because it's a fourth degree polynomial, there'll be four of these linear binomial terms, or I guess technically a billion, but we won't get into that. Um, so this, this negative 5, in fact, is one of these guys. And so I know that P of X is going to be made up of this minus negative 5, this X minus negative 2, and this X minus 1, and X minus 3. And so it looks like we might be done there. Let's just simplify some of this stuff up. X plus five. Remember, my, but recall, I've, I've told you to ignore a piece of information, but we're gonna talk about it. X minus one, X minus three. Let's quickly examine what's going on graphically with this. If I had a function with those roots, those roots would correspond to x-intercept points of 0 comma negative 5. I'm sorry, not 0 comma negative 5, doofus. Uh, negative 5 comma 0, those are x-intercepts. Negative 2 comma 0, 1 comma 0, and 3 comma 0. So let's plot those points. Let's change color here. So negative 5, 0 negative 2, 0, 1, 0, and 3, 0. 1, 2, 3. Count, count, learn how to count. And so if I graph my function and hold on, it, it would look possibly something like this. Okay, it, possible. Haven't, I haven't graphed this, so I'm not sure what it actually looks like. But let me ask you this. Could our function actually look like this? I mean, it's going through all four of those points. Excuse me, yeah, all four of those points. Could it look like this? I don't know how this pink is going to show up. Could it be flatter? So something that looks like this. Could it look like that? Or let's just go crazy here. Could it actually look like, I don't want to use orange because that's the graph, it's just crazy yellow. Could it actually look like this guy? It could be any of those. So in fact, how many of those, how many functions, graphs of functions would go through these four points? It should, you should be thinking infinitely many. I can squish this and move them around, blah, 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 blah. So, in, f in fact, there are infinitely many. We need to go back to this last piece of information, this thing right here, and that identifies a single point, 0, 15, which would be on, on my scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it would be all the way up here, right? So the function actually looks goes all the way up there, and we need to figure out how do we incorporate, or how do we identify specifically the values that would generate that function that goes through that point. So we're going to take a look at this in this manner. 
So we'll go back to my original function with those roots laid out. x plus 5, x plus 2, x minus 1, and x minus 3, if I remember correctly. And we're going to put this number here. Because this number, if you recall, this multiplier, tells us how fast, how I think of it, I told you in class, how fast we shoot up the y-axis. So it makes things skinnier. So think about the parabola. That a value would make my parabola, quote, skinnier or wider. Or in fact, if it was negative, it would invert the parabola, right? So that a is controlling which of these, uh, which of these infinitely many functions they are, they, that are there. It won't change these values. Those are fixed, and it would be horizontal translation or vertical translation that would change those four values. So we're just trying to change the nature of our curve, not its location, and that's going to be an A value. So how do we determine what that A value is? Well, I got all these variables here. Do I have something I can substitute into those numbers to get rid of them? Yes. The y-intercept is 0, 15, which means that I can put 15 in for y, or the output of my function, or the range, and I get 15 is equal to a times 0 plus 5, times 0 plus 2, times 0 minus 1, times 0 minus 3. Then I get 15 is equal to a times 5, times 2, times negative 1, times negative 3. 15 equals a what is that, negative 10 times negative 3? I did these guys, what, 2 times 5 is 10, times negative 1 is negative 10, I get 15 equals a, what's that, 30? And so if I divide both sides by 30, I get a is equal to 1 half. So my function really is p of x equals 1 half x plus 5, x plus 2, x minus 1, x minus 3. And that's it. Have a good one.